foobar. I hate crossroads and, and pros and cons lists and upsides and downsides. Decisions are rough unless they are crystal clear or they're made with such passion that you know it's not really a decision at all. Like when I dropped out of high school to play Counter-Strike. Easy. First, I wanna say I really appreciate you guys. Um, honestly, genuinely, I, I read some of those comments and they brought me to tears. Furious Banana said that he's now a Zorzi and that's going on my tombstone. Furious Banana, we homies. I love building the Zors Nation together and all of us are part of it. I went on multiple deep dives in a, in a level of insanity. I learned more than I even wanted to know ever about monitors. First, let's do a full review of the Alienware AW3423DWF. This monitor is a QD OLED, quantum dot organic light emitting diode, and the first of its kind to be utilized in a gaming monitor in such a way. Now I got it on sale for $1,000. What separates this version, which is the AWD 32417194-16F, and the regular model is the G-Sync module. The pros of that model are essentially that it has a little bit better HDR and it has official G-Sync capability. The FreeSync version still has the same exact adaptive sync, which works perfectly. It's got 10 hertz less, but it has way less input lag. It's firmware upgradable, which the G-Sync the module isn't. On top of being $300 more, it just doesn't make sense. Unless you want the best possible HDR, or you really need that G-Sync Ultimate for some odd reason. Let's start with the obvious thing that you can, you can see is that it's big, it's 34 inches, which I think is pushing the limits on a gaming monitor size-wise. We'll get more into that later. On top of that, it's widescreen. This is the first time ever that I've used a widescreen monitor. And uh, I have to say, I, I kind of like it because you can kind of see more of the world, which as you get used to it becomes kind of addicting. I do have a Pimax 8KX, which I have bought two years ago and I've hardly ever used due to life stuff. But when you switch to that Pimax field of view in VR, it's kind of like going to widescreen. It, it, it's a big deal especially if your goal is immersion. As long as you keep the, the thing far away from your face, otherwise, you, you know, you could be a little bit claustrophobic. The included stand is fantastic. You can tilt all the way up. You can also tilt to flat. So you can go all the way down here and you can go all the way up here. At first, I wasn't sure because it felt like when I was going to do a little swiveling, it would break, but no, indeed it does. It's got a little 5% swivel. That's the full extent of it, folks. It's good enough for government work. You can't go vertical. A little bit less flexibility compared to the LG. However, I decided to mount it. I have the Ergotron HX mounting arm, and it was a breeze to mount, no problem. Appearance-wise, I, I really like the Alienware uh, a little bit over the LG because it doesn't have that ridiculous, that ridiculous mirror strip. It's pretty simple, it just says, the lighting is pretty Zors, okay? There's three different options. You have the power button lighting, the alien head logo, and the 34. You can control each one of those independently. If you wanna get real crazy, you can download the Alien Effects Application Man, and that will give you even more flexibility, which you can use on your computer directly from the software. Now the included ports are, you have a power port, you got two USBs, one of them can do charging, that's through the USB cable. It has a headset port, a speaker port, and it has two display ports. It has a security lock. Ooh, did y'all know about the security lock? You buy a Kensington lock and you can wrap it around your leg of a desk, this way nobody's flying off with your spaceship, nobody. Otherwise, Mr. Kensington himself comes down and takes care of you understand and one HDMI 2.0 port foobar inside the box you'll find a cable that I haven't seen before a USB-C to display port cable if you want to attach a device there is no HDMI cable included foobar the response time is fantastic and now clearly it's not gonna be as fast as the LG due to the, the Hertz limitation, but 
it's still an OLED, so it's damn good. Now, I would say it's about the same as my Samsung G7 with motion blur reduction on, which is pretty good. Settings-wise, there's more options on the Alienware, including a whole bunch of HDR options, which are not on the LG. The settings are just more abundant. You have more things you can play with on the Alienware. Most importantly, you have Alien Vision Man, which is really fun, actually. I kind of had fun with it, especially when you forgot to take your antidepressants or you find out your girl's cheating on you. You just turn on Alien Vision, you'll feel right, right better, right at home. Now the OLED care options are similar. There's a pixel refresh, and until you turn it off, every four hours you'll get a notification saying you should do the pixel refresh. You can always just check manually. You turn it on and it'll show you. The four things it'll show you if you're in HDR mode, what preset mode you're in, what the health of your OLED is, and that's little, little green, yellow, or red. Yellow means run the pixel refresh. It'll also show you the level of dark stabilizer. I ran outside to get a bagel, all right? A little poppy bagel, I was hungry and I left a game all tabbed. And you know when your video card's still whirring, indicating the computer thinks it's playing, even though you're all tabbed on Windows? Two hours, came home, watched some Black Mirror, which, which is not the best writing in the world, in my, in my opinion. And then I came back and I was flipping out. Had I left that on or fallen asleep, could have been the end of the world. In the description, I linked a R-Ting's link showing what happens when they did their OLED burn-in test and it will certainly motivate you to not f around. Warranty-wise, Alienware wins. It's three years and burn-ins covered. But that being said, don't, don't be an idiot, okay? A lot of people are getting refurbished ones when they try to do the replacement. Use your OLED with caution, be careful. TPC is actually off, okay? Now, according to HDTV test, and that's another YouTuber, that guy is f***ing Zors. He says that it's not TPC that's on on the LG, but actually some form of local dimming. Fubar. Either way, it's the same result. The LG changes brightness all the time, and the Alienware does not. Ugh. It's so refreshing to, to just, you know, have the same brightness all the time. I had m minor text issues with the Alienware, okay, but if you run scaling or if you run clear type, you'll fix those right up, no problemo. Now, you know that Ice-T song called Colors? Colors, colors. Well, I went straight fucking nuts, insanity level into the research of colors. Now, I never gave too many fucks about color, okay? I always pro prioritize input lag, speed, response time, uh, lack of motion blur, but these things are thousand motherfucking dollars each. And I had a whole piece of paper that told me how accurate the colors were. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. I straight jumped into the color abyss. Me and Ice-T went right down into it. When you first get the thing, okay, go into your color management and make sure you don't have some other fucking ICC profile ruining your life. Get rid of it, do the calibration. By even doing that little calibration, I, I personally got the gamma I like, which is really up to you. Right? The whole thing is, is your opinion. Uh, also, when you're in the NVIDIA settings, make sure you're using full, right? Under NVIDIA, use NVIDIA settings, color full. And there's a couple other of those in the color options in NVIDIA. The Alienware has superior color. It's more accurate in SDR and in HDR. The Alienware uses something called DCI-P3. Now DCI-P3, stands for the Digital Cinema Initiatives Protocol 3, message MC4 squared. This number has been disconnected and is no longer in service. Message C4X, that's what it kind of, anyways. The DCI-P3 is offering a wider color gamut. It is 26% more colors than sRGB. It is the gold standard in digital film. And what's crazy is you can use it anytime you want. You can use it in SDR mode you can use it in HDR mode. When I switch it back here, to this, I mean, look at the difference. You see that? Uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's straight up Zors, in my opinion. And uh, it separates the two monitors to me uh, quite a lot. See me personally, I found that creator mode with DCI-P3 set with gamma of 2.4 was just the most 
overall awesome experience, whether I was in SDR or HDR. Another thing with the Alienware is it actually has three options because you have SDR, which is where you turn off HDR on the monitor completely. Then it has HDR monitor, which we're gonna call monitor HDR, which can only be set to either on or off. The, those options don't work. Then if you turn on HDR in Windows, now you have true HDR and you can utilize all the different HDR options on the monitor. So you actually have three. Then if you multiply that by two, because you can do sRGB or DCI-P3, you have six variants of options where the LG has two. HDR on, which does use DCI-P3, or not. That's it. Let me tell you a secret, okay? PC gamers, right? We're, we're essentially fucking lunatics. We will go to the ends of the earth to get that 1% performance difference. We're the craziest fucks. We mod everything, we change everything, we, they, they, they build apps to do shit you didn't even know about. Half of these guys on Reddit should be working for the companies, okay? PC gamers push all technology forward. Now on that note, there's a bunch of things I found on the internet that can improve your experience. Firstly, I highly suggest everyone download Le Doge. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Sir, if you're out there and I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But Le Doge made no video underscore sRGB. Th this thing is really, really cool, okay? It's a little tool that lets you clamp the colors so you get less of the extravagant overblown colors. Even cooler is you can optimize in the settings whether you want it to be set for sRGB, or DCI-P3, or BT2020, or even Adobe sRGB. So you have all these options. Then you can also turn dithering off if you want to test the color bits and if they're actually working, or the difference between dithering and non-dithering. This guy's awesome. You have so many more options with this thing. Personally, I like the clamp on DCI-P3. After all my testing, I found that to be the most lifelike, the most real-like. Now, if you like cartoony, super animated, then you might go sRGB no clamp. Most games are built for sRGB. I just like the option of having the ability to do different color choices to make it more realistic. Now, as most of you already widescreen aficionados know, a lot of games don't support widescreen. A lot of old games definitely not gonna support it. Again, PC gamers to the rescue, we have widescreen fixer and we have flawless widescreen because leave it to a PC gamer to show a motherfucker what we gonna get. We gonna get some widescreen whether you like it or not. As I mentioned before, it's HDMI 2.0 FUBAR. And this is a real tragedy. This is a tragedy akin to when a game developer says it's PC centric, but it's really a console port that doesn't have FOV options and has permanent mouse acceleration that they ain't never gonna fix. If it had HDMI 2.1, we'd be having a different conversation. It could have saved me hours of testing and Reddit scouring. Foobar. The Alienware also does not support display stream compression. I was gonna say confession. And therefore you're only offered by default 100 hertz 10 bit or 165 hertz 8 bit. You know what I say? You know what I say to that? F that. After countless hours of research and my ingenuity, I discovered that you can actually create a custom resolution where you overclock this bitch and you can get 157 hertz at 10 bit color. <laughs> You, you can't go higher than that because using the tool that I linked, it shows you clearly that the highest you can get is 157 hertz and still be within the range of possibilities. And even in order to do that, you have to use CVT reduced blank version two to get true 10 bit color. I read that people were going up to 165. You can get 165 and it will say 10 bit, but it's not actually 10 bit. I tested this for hours. My friend Dolores and I, bless her little heart, she's not a gamer, she's just using her little eyes, trying to figure out what's going on and give me the judgment call to show, to get the, the, the second opinion. But it doesn't actually work at 165. 157, passenger 157. Always bet on 10 bit color, okay? Because you gotta have it. Now, by the way, when I say that I discovered, I discovered it in the same way that Christopher Columbus discovered America, which is to say I didn't discover it, okay? 
Now, who discovered it is CHL Ronald on Reddit. CHL Ronald, if you're out there, you're a fucking superstar. You're in the fucking Zora's nation. Brilliant work. Mwah, love it. Changed my life. If you ever use HDR off completely, it's gonna be a different set of resolutions. You're gonna to need to overclock again and set another custom resolution. I'm not a monitor scientist or anything, but it seems to be working fine. I, I, uh, I'm not noticing any issues. I hope it doesn't blow up. I just can't do it, Captain. There's no more power. And now Alienware, why didn't you just include this? You could have saved me a week of my life and I even turned down sex to be testing this shit. So please, just next time, put it on. The, put it as an option. You know, you could even put it in the manual, 157 10-bit or 165 8-bit. Now, anybody who thinks that 8-bit color is worth 8 hertz, okay? No. You, you're trading 8 hertz, okay, for 10-bit color. I'd buy that for a dollar. The Alienware has infinitely more HDR options. Now the FreeSync version has some problems with HDR 1000, but I found, again with the Reddit forum, that if you go to 67 contrast, you can get a more accurate tracking for HDR. Frankly though, the T1000 brightness is just, it's like, a, a, it's abrasive. I, I don't even see any reason why anyone would use it, ah. in my opinion, unless you're playing in a well-lit room from 10 feet away or something, but I just don't see the value. Now the True Black 400, once it's properly configured, is pretty cool. You can also do HDR in DCI-P3 or sRGB, so it even gives you more flexibility. I'm assuming you guys already have custom resolution utility installed because it's such a magical thing, but if you go to your CTA-86 ex in extension blocks, click Edit, HDR Static Metadata, click Edit, and then you have the luminance. Now you can change these numbers and play with them, but essentially I heard that 138 and 138 equals a 1000 nit screen but feel free to play with this as well there's also this little bug okay where it, it the, it'll be look washed out and Dell admits themselves that this is an issue on some games so what you want to do and this is straight from Dell is that you want to get the console mode on and turn on source tone mapping this will help create that much you know, accurate HDR as opposed to the washed out look Dell says they're gonna come out with a firmware that will update all this, and it's supposed to be out any day now. I hope it includes BFI, because that would just make my whole fucking day. Alien Vision Man! In my opinion, using the DCI-P3 creator mode, Gamma 2.4 with HDR on in true black is the best thing this is gonna look, and that's my best bet. Always optimize the HDR settings in-game and in Windows prior. Yet again, PC gamers come to the rescue with Special K. I'm not talking about that club drug ketamine, by the way, just so you know. Although, uh, I guess Special K and this thing change your vision. I'm talking about Special K, the app, the link's in the description. And what it allows you to do is, again, have more options on HDR and add HDR to games that never even had HDR. I got to play with it very, very minorly, but it's just another cool thing. Also, you can download the Dell Display Manager, which even gives you more options on HDR and uh, amongst other things. I tested HDR for so long that I almost lost my, my mind and I basically found out that overall the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Now that being said, there are some games when you optimize HDR in Windows and the monitor and the game and they're all playing nice nice, fucking dancing, they're all singing Kumbaya together, then you do get some astonishing shit. It's like you're living in a comic book. We're in the DCI-P3 color space here, right? So if we switch this to, we can't switch it. We can't switch it now because we already turned HDR on. And that's the primary thing to know is that you have to change the mode in Creator before you go turn on HDR. He's running away from Razor Synapse. There he goes. He's slow, but he's, he's getting away. The brightness on the Alienware is significantly better. Uh, I personally didn't see the need for the brightness being that much better, but it does give way, gives option for a, a black frame insertion to be done with 
with no big loss because if you increase the brightness and it cuts it in half, you'd still have it. It also does give you, especially in SDR mode, a little more flexibility and it's unquestionably brighter. It's not even close. Okay, folks, let's talk about the coating. This is the first glossy OLED screen I've ever played with. And before that, I, I thought the mat was pretty good. After going from the Alienware for like two weeks back to the LG, the coating got on my mother nerves, okay? We're gonna call it mustard grain seed. It felt like someone smeared mustard grain on my LG OLED. If you're not actively looking for it, it's kind of like a scratch on a car. Like when I got a scratch on my new car and I'm like, you see it, right? You see it, man. And they're like, no, I don't see it. And they're like, well, look over here, look in the sun. And there it is. It's like that a little if you have no lights on it and you're in game and it's darker. If you have a light on, even without a light on, and you have just a web browser on and you're researching about MLA technology with this mustard grain ass coating, it's not great, FUBAR. For the purposes of this testing, in order to make this equivalent, they're both running at 144 hertz and 10 bit color. Now, even, even in a dark environment right here, you can see the matte coating, right? It, it, it's this layer of grain on there. It, it defends against light, but in this use case, we have no light. I've removed all light and hope from this, from this room. The Alienware is superior in every way, coating-wise, if, and this is a big if, you can control every facet of light in your room because this motherfucker reflects everything. It reflects every source of light. It reflects the RGB keyboard light. It reflects self-hatred that you have in yourself. You better not have any lights on it. This is a very good example of what the coding is doing. And when they're at the same frame rate, the same hertz and the same color, I mean, you can see, I mean, this kind of puts it, puts, puts the, puts it to rest here. This is going to be more, more beautiful. Even, even in, without the widescreen, it's prettier. Do you have my foreskin? I've lost it. The maturity of gamers has not increased over the decades. You have to give credit to Alienware, okay? The original version of this thing came out a year ago, okay? That means for 10 months, it was head and shoulders over everyone for immersive gaming. Okay, and, and they're coming out with a 500 hertz monitor, basically right now, which is extremely exciting. They're always at the forefront, pushing the envelope with the light controlled, and you're playing a game that isn't about winning at all costs. Then the Alienware is the best gaming experience I've ever had on any monitor ever. It feels like it's worth a thousand dollars. That is after all the tweaking I did to it though. If I hadn't found that 157 hertz 10-bit color trick, I would have been way less impressed. Alienware, why, 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 why? When you took the G-Sync module out and you had the option to add the HDMI 2.1, why not just go for it? You would have been kicking major ass on that 12-bit 165. The new MSI is essentially, from what I've read, an Alienware. It's 175, 34 inch, 175 hertz, but it has two HDMI 2.1, which means you're gonna get 12 bit 175, which is gonna be pretty Zors. I don't know if it's worth buying, considering it has some, some bullshit bar at the bottom of it or some light bar, which is even more gimmicky than you, I've never even heard of such a whack ass thing. But anyways, that brings us to the LG, because the LG decided to use HDMI 2.1. Whoever made that decision that LG I'm giving you a raise. Just tell them Zor's Gaming. Just tell them Lord Gertrulo said you deserve a raise. Apparently the new Asus is coming out and I read it does not have HDMI 2.1. Oops, big, big, big mistake. LG comes with an HDMI cord, okay? Use it. HDMI 2.1 leaves display port in the dust. You get better colors, you get more, you get more vibrancy. There's nothing like 12 bit, 240 Hertz with enough bandwidth to drive it without display stream comp compression. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a string. The LG has superior crispness. However, the colors here are more precise. This controller, it's actually, it's actually pretty Zors. I got real tired of 
you know, ugh. Alienware should have included a controller. Uh, one guy commented on the last video, he went out and bought two LG replacement TV controllers because they work. Now, LG should have had the functionality to change it on the, on, the on the monitor if this is lost or broken, and Alienware should have included it as an option. Like, hello, hello folks, get it together. If you're buying this thing, you really want to get at least over 100 frames on every game. I mean, you want to get over 100 frames on any game, period, ever. Because if you're getting only 60, 70 frames on the wide screen, it's not going to be worth it. 30, 80 or less, I might just not go with that. You know, I might not go with this either though because you need 240 hertz to really push this bad boy. These are both monitors intended for very, very rich or ridiculous people like myself that have no money but have credit cards. Neither of them have any black frame insertion, which is anti-motion blur. The Alienware could really use it. I think I heard that Chief from Blurbuster said the LG could literally straight add it in a, in a uh, firmware update. I don't know if the Alienware can too, but, but whoever does that first, I will send a letter of gratitude to. Do it, do it, LG, do it. You must do it. I have to say the LG has straight up next level OLED technology. I saw that and felt that. It actually uses MLA technology, which is micro lens array, and brightness enhancing algorithms known as meta boosters to create more accurate brights. It also offers some better uniformity and better viewing angles. And it is the absolute first of its kind ever to be released in a monitor. I learned this from HDTV Test, the guy Zors. Go check him out. If you haven't done it already, subscribe to his ass. Combined with the HDMI 2.1, it feels like you took a jump forward in time. If you're following along, the first thought you're thinking is, what about the widescreen 45-inch LG? 240 hertz, HDMI 2.1, widescreen. Problem is 45 inches. I, I just, look, look how... 45 inches would be five and a half more inches on either side. I mean, yeah, if I move the desk out and I push the monitor arm all the way to the back, but even then it's kind of pushing it. And then you're also looking at a, a drop in pixels per inch. We still have this coding problem, which has now become a problem for me. So we're still not in, in, in any word of perfection land. Let's not forget the thing is $1,800. So when you're deciding, ask yourself just one question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? And then ask yourself, do I like widescreen? Hmm, do I like widescreen? If you don't like widescreen, then it, this is already, what are we talking about here? There's nothing to talk about, you're getting an LG. And also, ask yourself, do I play extremely serious FPS competitive games on a level that is an aspiring professional gamer? Because if that's the case, then actually neither of these monitors are for you. You want to get the Asus 360 or the Zowie 360, which I'm about to review next. But I digress. You guys know I've talked about my dad. Oh my God. This is a mouse. It looks like a cockroach. This is totally unfucking real. I like the feet and the wheel feels nice. It doesn't even feel like you're picking up anything. Anything, right? Nothing. It is Zors. I would say it's Zors, depending on how it works. My dad was a graphics guy. Uh, he loved stories. He loved RPGs. He played, I don't know how many hours of Star Wars Galaxies. And he loved things like Mass Effect and Dragon Age. And, and he, you know, if you're one of those guys who loves other worlds, look at this dragon. Look at, look at him. Look at this dragon over here. That's, that's how my dad would, he, he would have loved this thing. For a guy like that, he played Destiny 2, so he competed in FPS, but he wasn't trying to win. He was just having fun. If you're that kind of gamer, this is not even, this is the, this is the one you wanna get. It's beautiful, it's immersive, it's, it's otherworldly, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. Now me personally, you know, I, I still have that ultra serious competitive FPS Counter-Strike blood running through my veins, even as an old man. You know, I, I play Metro and, and single player games, and I love wacky ass old school, you know, what do they call them, boomer shooters. Uh, I would love to play everything like that with this monitor. However, I might feel like a dual monitor setup might be the, the way to go, uh, if, because I'm, you know, have one monitor that's just for, for gorgeous, and then have the Asus 360 or the Zowie 360 that you pull out when you're trying to win. But if you can only get one monitor like most normal humans and your goal is not to play professionally and the coding, mustard coding doesn't bother you because you can live with it really. 
or if you're in a room with a bunch of people in lights, or if you're in a college dorm, for example, and people are screaming, and people are like, yo, bro, look at this, and they got the phone and shit, light reflecting, then the LG will be a very fine choice. All manufacturers take note. The first company to release a 34 inch, not 45, a 34 inch, 240 hertz, 1440 widescreen OLED with black frame insertion, I will just so gladly, and 12-bit HDMI 2.1, I will so gladly hand you $1,800. Gladly. The LG will be noticeably faster with crisper textures, lower input lag, lower motion blur, and is the choice if you want an OLED and you desire to win at competitive FPS games more than anything else. Browsing the internet and other tasks will be annoying with this mustard coating and the dimming. However, the Alienware is truly otherworldly. So if you can lose the 83 hertz and don't mind a little loss in response time, input lag, little tiny bit more motion blur. In other words, if you aren't trying to play an FPS at a super high competitive level, then this spaceship will take you to other dimensions where no man has gone before. Stay tuned, like and sub, and support the channel by bombarding Alienware with letters upon letters, telling them that they must send Zor's Gaming the 500 hertz monitor for review. No matter what hertz you're playing at, you must remember to stay Zor's. But another part of me was thinking, what if by some miracle we stay and wait for that dream monitor? Someday we might decide that watching Zor's Gaming was the one decent thing we were able to pull out of this whole god-awful, shitty mess. That's what I was thinking, sir. Like you said, Captain, we do that, we all earn the right to go home. <laughs>